because they do not know, they do not understand, they walk about in darkness. And again, darkness doesn't mean that they're walking about in evil necessarily or something awful and horrible and worldly. It just means there's a certain level of light missing. There's areas of their life that are in darkness. And so they have not had the light revealed. There's, there's parts, parts of the life, life that are devoid of actively useful light. All of you that are here is because there was a point in your life where you had your bubble popped enough to show you that you don't know what you don't know. That what you thought you knew wasn't necessarily correct. And you had to humble yourself to receive that. Because just because he popped your bubble didn't, he, didn't need to necessarily mean that you would actually receive it. But he popped your bubble and woke you up to the idea that, guess what? Some of the things you thought you knew are not exactly correct. We are hunger, hungering and thirsting for the truth. And that's a phrase that's used a lot even in the people that you know that are not in the truth. But they want that, or they like to think that they are, but they're in that delusional place that Abba has allowed them to be. But often when I talk to mainstream Christians, they'll tell me, oh, we just look for the truth. Our church is all about the truth. All we care about is the truth, and nothing but the truth to help me. <laughs> but they can only see what they can see. They can't see more. They don't know what they don't know. What were the chains that he broke. It was your haughty, arrogant, self-sovereign will had to be broken. You had to have that, the chains that had you locked onto, I have to decide what I want. If I don't like it, I'm not doing it, and blah, blah, blah. And if I like it, nobody's telling me not to do it, and et cetera. He said he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and he broke their chains in pieces. This had you shackled to sin. It had you shackled to going the wrong way. Now, this may have been too subtle because of the way, the way it was worded here, but the assumption is that you be simple. Because it doesn't say it just gives understanding to people. Doesn't say it gives understanding just to men or women or human beings or whatever. It says it gives understanding to the simple. So you need to stop overthinking it, stop thinking you're so smart, allow him to unfold it, which he would normally do through teachers, through anointed, appointed, etc. but allow, allow it to be opened up to you because it's going to give you the light you need, but you have to be simple enough. But oh no, I'm smarter. I'm going to do all my own whatever and I'm going to come to my own studies and my own conclusions. I'm not saying you shouldn't study. Don't get me wrong. But be careful of getting to the point where now you think you're smarter than those that are anointed and appointed. You have to, this is hard now. How do you get to a place, not just a son to a father, but anybody to anybody, where you can actually accept, treasure up, and trust that you're getting wisdom and understanding. Can you, how do you get to a place where you trust another human being that much? That's really the, the scary challenge, isn't it? They had that problem with Moses. They had that problem with Yeshua because Yeshua was here in a flesh suit. How do you trust anybody? How many of you have had family members accuse you in your journey to this point of being unstable? because <laughs> you've been to four or five different flavors till you got here. I know family members that had that problem, confused their children. Now their children don't know what they're doing because their parents never knew what they were doing. They never got stable. They never found and committed to anything because they were always looking for what they liked, what they wanted, what their filters were. Instead of looking for the pillar in the cloud or the pillar of fire and finding the anointing and the appointing and going there and saying, I found you, I'm ready, teach me. You have to understand that he's treasuring up stability for the straight, a shield to those who are walking blamelessly. That doesn't mean he's only a shield when you do everything perfectly. But you know what? You don't have any blame if you teshuva. You don't have any blame if you repent. You don't have any blame. You now have removed the blame. Oh, you were at fault until you did that. 
But then you owned it. That's repentance. Then you got back on the path. That's teshuva. And now you're no longer blamed. Now you're blameless. That's part of the repentance forgiveness process that Abba gives us. For the straight shall dwell in the earth and the perfect be left in it, but the wrong shall be cut off from the earth and the treacherous ones plucked out of it, which somebody needs to help Tim LaHaye know that this verse is in the Bible because in his book, Left Behind, apparently he has it backwards. Because here it says, the straight shall dwell in the earth and the wrong shall be cut off and plucked out. Because it all takes place ultimately here. Okay? Whatever is there that you want is coming here. Read Revelation 21. That stuff is coming here. There's a new heaven and a new earth, and the new Jerusalem is coming down here to the new earth. Well, spiritually, it's the same problem. If you've got a problem in your walk, a problem in your character, a problem in your, in, you know, in, in your changing... Well, let me, let me stop that again. If you have a problem in matching you up with him, where you're not matching up well enough, you ought to go get help with that from someone who deals with that stuff. You don't go to the dentist to deal with that or the doctor. You go to the anointed appointed to say, I'm having some struggles here, and I need someone who knows how to handle that. And, but you have to go willing and ready to listen. My son, accept my words. Are you ready to listen? Are you ready to go seek out counsel? 